Call for Juan Zarate comes from Colesville, Maryland. Vera. Well, good morning. Hi. Good and morning. thank you for taking my call. And uh, this is my first time calling, so I hope you'll be patient with me. Welcome. Um, I am concerned. I want to make a comment because I'm a sociologist, and I just think it's imperative that the American people notice that we are acting like a nation divided against itself, with particularly the Republicans attacking a sitting president who admits, the Republicans are admitting that we're at war. Shouldn't it be considered treasonous? It certainly violates our Constitution for a former sitting vice president to fight the president, sitting president, in a time of war and say things that would cause hip, hip hop and give fodder to our enemies. You've been invited to make some political comments, Mr. Zarate. <laughs> I'm not a politician by training, but uh, let, me, let me take a crack at this. Um, I don't think healthy debate about our national security practices uh, is, or out of, is out of bounds. And certainly when we were in the Bush administration, there was plenty of debate, uh, and there should have been. There's in, an important element of uh, open public debate and scrutiny over what the government's doing. So I don't think uh, healthy criticism is, is a problem, and, and it should be part of our national culture. That said, um, I agree with the caller in that we've got to remember who the enemy he here is. Uh, we've got a transnational movement uh, trying to radicalize uh, people around the world, including American citizens, uh, and they continue to try to attack us in big ways and small ways. And so uh, we've got to keep our eye on the ball, and I think that's something that President Obama, I think, reasserted yesterday, which was healthy and good. I think we all need to now work together to figure out what that means, uh, given our long-term interests and how we deal with problems like uh, Yemen, not just because of al-Qaeda, but because of the potential instability there. Same with Somalia and other parts of the world. How did you get interested in this work? Um, I've been very fortunate and blessed over my career. I, I was uh, a lawyer by training, went to Harvard Law, uh, got into the honor program under the Clinton administration, uh, worked for Janet Reno. I was uh, in the terrorism and violent crime section. I was a very junior attorney at the time, but was given great opportunities to work with some of the great prosecutors of our time, Pat Fitzgerald, Mike Garcia, Paul Butler, uh, folks in New York working the embassy bombings case. Uh, I was later put on the USS Cole case, working with great prosecutors here like George Toscas, who's still uh, doing great work for the Department of Justice. Um, and so I was a young prosecutor learning at the feet of some great uh, prosecutors who were looking at the problem of al-Qaeda uh, before 9-11 and trying to, to address it. The frustration, by the way, in that period, and, and I, again, it was a junior guy, but I was witnessing this firsthand, was the fact that we knew al-Qaeda was at war with us. They had not only declared this in 96, but they were taking progressively greater and greater steps to attack us and to find vulnerabilities. Uh, and we saw that, obviously, in the East African embassy bombings and in the coal attack. Um, but uh, the Bush administration came into power. I was uh, asked to move over to the Treasury Department three weeks before 9-11. Uh, and when 9-11 happened, I was asked to help be part of a leadership team that would go after terrorist financing and track uh, illicit financial flows. Did that for four years and then was asked to go to the National Security Council. Juan Zarate, former Deputy National Security Advisor for Counterterrorism under the Bush Administration and currently with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you for being our guest on the Washington Journal.